It is a blessing to be back here at the Chapel of Divine Mercy. It's actually been closer to a year since I have preached here. For all of you who are newer here, my name is Father Joseph Aitona. I'm from this religious community, and I'm actually here to preach a mission. I'm currently assigned to the Shrine of Our Lady of Good Help in Champion, Wisconsin, the only approved Marian apparition site in the United States of America. Champion, Wisconsin has a population of about 40, so I'm excited to be in South Union this week. Now, what does a mission have to do with you? What does it have to do with me as the missionary? Well, it's very simple. I'm here to remind each and every single one of you of your life's goal getting to heaven. Now, if I were to ask you how often you thought of heaven within this past day or this past week or maybe even this past month, God willing, it's more than once. Hopefully that's why you're here in this chapel right now, not simply because it's part of a commandment or because your parents are forcing you to but because you love God and you want to go to heaven. If heaven isn't any better than our life here on earth, why even work at getting there? Why even go to church every week? You know, I'm blessed as a missionary. I'm able to travel around the world preaching. I was in Australia several years ago. Usually if there is a school attached to the church, I like to go into the classrooms and ask the students questions about heaven to see what they know. And after I ask a series of questions, they'll ask questions right back at me and they'll say something like, Father, if you're talking about heaven, I want to know whether my dog Spot will be there when I get there. I want to know if I'll be able to play my favorite sports, basketball, football, soccer. Someone actually asked me, will there be high waves to surf on in heaven? Will I be able to eat my favorite food, they ask. Usually at that age, it's pizza. And I think one of those most important questions, at least during those lower grades, will I be able to see and talk to my loved ones who have passed before me in heaven, such as my great-grandfather? And all of these are good questions. Hopefully you know the answers to these questions. If not, it's okay. I'm here to help. But before we talk about heaven, it is necessary that we at least mention the three of the other four last things. That is death, judgment, and hell. Now I say these things not necessarily to scare anyone here in this chapel, but it is my duty as a missionary at least to mention them at some part of the mission. Now I know I'm not telling you anything new. As all of you know here in this chapel, after we pass, that's something we can't avoid, we'll immediately be judged by Jesus Christ. It's what you call the particular judgment. If we die in the state of God's sanctifying grace, the grace we first received when we were baptized, he will deem us worthy to go to heaven. Some of us will have to pass through purgatory first, some longer than others, but we will eventually get to heaven. If we die in what we call the state of mortal sin, then we will be damned to hell. Now I say that knowing that uh, Jesus is the savior. By his death on the cross, by his blood being shed, he has opened the gates of heaven for each and every single one of us. He doesn't want anyone to go to hell. But if someone is damned to hell, they have chosen by their own free will to serve Satan or themselves rather than God. Now hell, it's interesting as I go from church to church, people think that hell is more of a place, a specific location, as if you can get a map of the United States of America and see that hell is a city in 
Southern California. <laughs> well, as bad as that place can get, that's where I grew up, it's not there. Although someone did tell me that hell is definitely a city in Michigan. Okay, either way, the hell that Jesus speaks of in the Gospels is not necessarily a specific place or location. It's more of a state of being. It's a state of being completely deprived of the one thing that can fully satisfy us as human beings, namely God. Hell is the eternal separation from God from love, from truth, from goodness. If I can use human terms to try to describe something like that, obviously it's very difficult, I would say hell is like being absolutely starving, yet never having any food whatsoever to eat. It's like being sick with COVID, a migraine headache with cancer, yet no medicine, no cure forever. Hell is like being isolated and lonely and having no friends or family to speak to for all eternity. Worst of all, it's to use your free will to serve Satan and his minions rather than God. I certainly don't recommend that place to anyone here. Okay, now that we got the bad news out of the way, let's talk about heaven. If you know your scripture, St. Paul is very clear when he describes heaven. He says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it so much as dawned on man what God has prepared for those who love him. We cannot even fathom with our finite minds how good it will be in heaven when we see God face to face. If you can think of your favorite day here on earth, maybe for some, your wedding day, or better yet, maybe your honeymoon, maybe for some high schoolers, I don't know, when you went to the prom, or for some children when you got your favorite video game, whatever it is, think of your favorite day, multiply that by about a million for all eternity, and we have a little grasp of how good it will be in heaven when we're with God forever. Jesus took St. Peter, St. James, and St. John up Mount Tabor, and he was transfigured. He was glorified. They got a glimpse of what heaven would be like. St. Peter said, Lord, it is good that we are here. If I may make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. In other words, I am completely satisfied seeing you in all of your glory. So some of the questions like, will your dog or better yet, here in Kentucky, will your horse be in heaven, God willing, when you get there? Well, the church hasn't said one way or another whether our favorite pet will be in heaven. Will you be able to eat your favorite food? Well, that's debatable, but the last time I checked, it was called a heavenly banquet. So I'm sure if you eat food, it will be the best of foods. Will you be able to play your favorite sports in heaven? Yes, lots of room in heaven to play your favorite sports. Not only that, maybe you'll be able to fly like the angels. So all of you who wanted a slam dunk here on earth and never got the chance, you might get your chance later. Will you be able to see and talk to your loved ones who have passed before you in heaven? Yes, God willing, if they're there, you'll be able to encounter them one way or another. Now the whole point is this. All of the good things that we experience here on this earth in our lives, whether it's the car that we drive, the house that we live in, or the friends and family that we have, as good as all of these things are, they pale in comparison to seeing the Holy Trinity. So no more of these wars, no more suffering, especially for those who suffer from physical illness. I don't know about you, no more politics that we have to deal with. All of these things will cease, God willing, when we get to heaven. So if you haven't started to pray, even on a daily basis as a Catholic, to persevere in God's sanctifying grace, I highly recommend that you start. 
because there is one person that is working non-stop in trying to keep you, in trying to keep me in getting to heaven, and that is the devil. As the devil tricked Adam and Eve at the beginning of creation, as our Lord allowed himself to be tempted by the devil, I guarantee you he will tempt you. And let me tell you something about Satan. He always promises more than he can give. So he'll tempt us in doing something against the commandments, and if we commit it, he will accuse us. He'll say, you call yourself a Catholic, and this is how you treat God? This is how you treat your neighbor? You know, he's very subtle as he tempts weakly Catholics like ourselves. He tempts us by a spiritual disease called lukewarmness. Lukewarmness is that sickness that causes those who are called to holiness, you and me, to be indifferent in our spiritual lives and our relationship with God. So yes, we may go to Mass every week like we're doing right now, but right after Mass is over and we leave the doors of the church, our Catholic Christian life is non-existent. Things that we should do on a daily basis, we neglect such as read the Bible every day. Do you maybe take 10 to 15 minutes out of your busy day to read sacred scripture, especially the Gospels? Do you pray every day? I'm not just talking about 10 seconds while you're falling asleep at night or before you eat a meal, but are you making substantial time out of your day to communicate with God? Have you stopped learning about your faith or did that end after you were confirmed? So the devil will trick us. He'll whisper in our ear, so to speak, oh, all you have to do as a Catholic is go to Sunday Mass and that's fine. So the struggle to improve in our faith is abandoned. The soul easily gives in to sin, especially nowadays by social media and the internet like pornography, and anything that has to do with God and the supernatural is reduced to doing things out of routine or out of obligation, as opposed to loving someone with your whole heart, your whole mind, and your whole soul. You know, our Lord spoke of lukewarmness in the book of Revelation. He said, because you are neither hot nor cold, because you are lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth, he says. So as Catholics, we're either moving closer to God in our relationship with him, or we're moving backwards. There is no middle ground. Can we put a price tag on our soul? For what shall it profit a man if he gains this whole world and yet suffers the loss of his own soul? Brothers and sisters, my question to you today as your missionary is very simple. Is heaven priority in your life? So again, I'm here traveling from Wisconsin to preach our mission. I will be preaching for the next four evenings beginning tomorrow on very basic yet essential topics of our faith, such as devotion to the Eucharist, frequent confession, the power of praying the rosary, things that you may have once learned as a Catholic but maybe forgot. Maybe some of you have never learned to begin with. Either way, these will be tools to help you get to heaven. Now besides preaching, I will be hearing confessions every night an hour before the mission begins at six o'clock. So if for some reason you have committed a sin, maybe even a grave mortal sin, maybe even in your distant past, and you're too embarrassed to go to Father Andy or Father Ricardo, you can just go to me because I'm leaving on Friday anyways. So you might as well get it all out while I'm here. Now with that being said, as you leave the doors of the chapel, I put a table there, and our examination of conscience brochure is on that table. I highly recommend that you take one of these and you look it over so you can have the best confession of your life during this mission. And if you go to at least three 
nights of the mission, including the last night, you can receive a plenary indulgence where all of the temporal punishment due to sin of your whole life will be wiped away. And if you die in that state, you will go directly to heaven. So I highly recommend that you take advantage of this mission here at the Chapel of Divine Mercy. With that being said, I also made copies of how to receive an indulgence during a parish mission. It's right beside the examination of conscience brochure. I've been praying for all of you. I will continue to pray for you during this mission. God willing, after you pass, Jesus will tell you, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. Yeah.